Okay, everybody. So the main topic for today's class is going to be the election process of the President of India. So you all know that 2022 is an election year, and we are all going to have a new president. Now, UPSC has this very simple pattern that we can observe by looking at the previous questions that every year we have a new president. Every time we have a new president, there is definitely one question, either in prelims exam or in the main exam from the election process of the president, right? So that is going to be the main topic for today's class. But let's see a couple of other things regarding the president of India. First is that there are two articles. First is article 52. This article clearly says that there shall be a president of India. So there shall means at all times there must be someone who is acting as the president of India. Either it is the president himself or in case of absence of president. That means if he is unable to discharge his duties or say in the death, in the eventuality of death of president or his sudden resignation or his impeachment, the vice president takes over the responsibilities of the office of president of India. Now, I'm sure you guys know this, that Indian constitution provides for a parliamentary form of government. That means we have a nominal head of state, that is the president of India, and whatever powers are vested in him to exercise those executive powers, there is a prime minister and council of ministers to aid and advise the president. So on paper, in constitution, you can see that article 53 has vested the executive power of union in the president. Asha, well, just a small mention, uh, in the entire class, you are free to jot down your own running notes, right? Feel free to take your own notes. Okay. So on paper, the executive power of the union has been vested in the president of India. But then whatever executive powers have been given to him, he will exercise them on aid and advice of whom? Of council of ministers headed by the prime minister. And this is given in article 74 of the Indian constitution. Right? Okay. Let us now come to first, what are the qualifications or the eligibility criteria for someone to become president of India? The very first qualification is that you must be a citizen of India. Citizen of India. Now tell me something, does it matter that whether this person who wants to contest for the election of president of India does it matter that whether he has become citizen of India by birth or by descent or by registration or by naturalization? No. So Indian constitution does not make any distinction among citizens on basis of the method of acquiring their citizenship. So even if I have become Indian citizen by, let us say, naturalization, then I'm eligible to contest for the elections of president. So the qualification is citizen of India. By what method? That does not matter. In some countries, say in America, to become American president, you must be a natural citizen of America and not naturalized, right? Okay. Second eligibility is regarding age, and that is minimum 35 years of age. And third is that to contest elections, you should be someone who is qualified to become member of Lok Sabha. Qualified to be a member of Lok Sabha. Does it mean that you must be a member of Lok Sabha? No. It only means that you must have qualifications to become member of Lok Sabha. So whatever qualifications are given in our constitution for the membership of Lok Sabha or parliament or any other law made by the parliament, this person must have those qualifications also. It does not mean that he must be an MP. You cannot hold two offices. In fact, in fact, if a sitting MP is elected as president of India, it is deemed that he has resigned his seat from the house, right? Okay. Now these three are positive qualifications given in the constitution. That means that a person must have, a candidate must have, but then we have one negative qualification also. That is something that he must not have. And what is that fourth negative qualification that he should not hold? He should not hold any office of 
profit. So now this brings us to a question that as to what is this office of profit? So let us understand, try to understand what is an office of profit. Okay. Now in our constitution, there are certain functionaries who are not allowed to hold any office of profit. And who are these functionaries in the constitution? First is president, that he is not allowed to hold office of profit. profit. Then we have vice president, then governors of states, governors of states, then we have MLAs and also the MLCs and finally the members of parliament MPs. So these functionaries as per constitution are not allowed to hold any office of profit. Let us understand why, why is that disqualification given? Now tell me something, all these guys who are holding some office under the constitution, that means all of them, they have certain constitutional duties. They have some official constitutional duties. And we expect all these people, all these functionaries to discharge their functions, to perform their duties in the interest of the country, in the interest of the public. But what if, what if in a particular situation, these functionaries find themselves in conflict of interest between two things, what two things, their official duties versus their personal interest, personal interest interest so tell me tomorrow when you guys join the services you will have some duties official duties sometimes while you are performing your duties now you may find yourself in a situation that if you perform your duty for the interest of society interest of country you may have to pay a personal price for that it means your official duty is conflicting with your personal interest so what would you guys do Yes, what will you guys do? I want to know your opinion. What will you prefer? Your personal interest or public interest? Desh ka hit. Haan. Right now, I know you will say this only. <laughs> but we will see when you actually become civil servants, what will you give priority to, right? We will see. We have to wait for that. Okay. Now, we do not want these people to even come under conflict of interest because we cannot take any chances. That if these people ever come into a conflict of interest between these two, we do not want them ever to give priority to personal interest over their constitutional duties. So what we want to prevent is that this conflict of interest should not arise in first place. So that if there is no conflict of interest, there is no question of any of these guys giving personal interest parity over their official duties. That is why constitution does not allow any of these guys to hold any office of profit. Now constitution has not defined as to what do you mean by office of profit. So one thing you have to remember for prelims exam that constitution does not explain, does not define, or does not give a list of offices that which offices can be called as offices of profit. Now our judiciary has done that job. So judiciary has given some, some features by which we can call a particular office as office of profit. For example, what can be those features? First is, if you are holding any office and you have been appointed to that office by government, either by government of India or by government of state, it means executive has given you that appointment. That is first feature. Second feature is the office that you are holding. It is a temporary office. It is not a permanent office. Right. Third, that this office which you are holding, because it is temporary, it is terminable. It means your services from that office can be terminated at any time. So it's not permanent. Right. And fourth, whatever office you have been given for performance of functions of that office, you will be given certain emoluments. Now, these emoluments, these emoluments, may not always be in cash. They can be what? They can be kind also. A kind means what? That the government of India can give, let us say, any of these guys any office. And because they're holding that office, they might get a free, let us say, office space. They might get, let us say, free staff to work under them. They might get free laptop. They might get free certain things 
which are not in cash but they are in kind so if any of these guys are holding any office which has these four features then he or she can be disqualified let me explain this by an example simple example let us say an mp so what is the job of an mp in parliament in parliamentary system we expect the parliament to hold executive accountable and this is more important function for the opposition parties in the parliament if not for the ruling party at least the opposition party in democracy is expected to hold the executive the ministers accountable right and we want all our mps to perform this function let us say there is a congress mp it means he is an mp of opposition party and opposition parties play a very important role in democracies because it is the opposition party which holds executive accountable which represents to the executive the problems of people aspirations of people or what decisions of the government they feel are not good for the people good for the country so opposition parties play a very important role right so this mp's constitutional duty is one of his duties is to hold executive accountable now what if let us say tomorrow government of india is going to appoint any let us say expert committee let us say a committee a committee on reforms on reforms in let us say india's higher education india's higher education right now our education minister he feels that this congress mp let us say earlier he was into teaching let's say he was a professor we do have some teachers in our parliament as members so let's say before he joined active politics he was a professor it means he has knowledge of india's higher education system so the government wants him to become member of this committee that means he is now being appointed as member of this committee by whom by government of india so first condition satisfied now membership of this committee is it a permanent membership no any time membership can be changed so it is not permanent so it is temporary second condition satisfied because it is temporary i can be any time removed from the committee so i can be terminated so third point satisfied now fourth point tell me something if this congress mp is given this job will he do this job for free is anything free in this world is anything free in this world nothing is free until recently we used to think even oxygen is free even that we have seen is no longer free we have to sometimes pay a very heavy price for that i told you the yeah the oxygen concentrator i gave you example right okay in fact you know when i was listening uh, fm while coming to the class so you know rjs on fm they share all sorts of uh, interesting and nonsense news sometimes so this rj was telling that there is some chinese company which many years back much before covid and much before this entire crisis pand pandemic there is some chinese company which has started going to top of certain hills like let's say rocky mountains where we have no pollution and the air is very clean so they go to top of these mountains and they are bottling fresh air no no pollution absolutely fresh air and they have started exporting those bottles with fresh air to many countries of the world especially where we have problem of high pollution say delhi very high pollution in november december months and that bottles cost that bottles cost in indian currency was i think 150 rupees he was telling 150 rupees and one bottle has air to give you 15 breaths 15 breaths kitni saanse milengi 150 rupaye mein ha 15 breaths saanse milengi to ek saans kitne ki hui par 10 rupaye so let's you breathe once 10 rupees is gone so right so you are supposed to breathe less breathe slow to save money nothing is for free so bhai if you are making this mp member of this committee on higher education and whenever this committee will have its meetings this mp will have to go to his meet to, to these meetings he has to give his time he has to give his experience he has to give his knowledge and in return he will definitely get some kind of profit some kind of emoluments emoluments are most likely not in cash not in cash but in various kind of kind for example a car a car to pick the mp from his home and drop him to the committee meetings and he will use that car for other purposes also later <laughs> free laptop would be given to him 
right? Free office space will be given to him. Couple of staff will be given to help him and system. So, and that together can be very good amount of you know, kind facilities. Now tell me this MP whose job as an MP was to hold government accountable is now holding an office because of which he's getting some kind of profit. Now, do you think when he goes to the parliament, he will do his constitutional duty of holding Mr. Modi and HRD minister, education minister accountable? No, because now he has come under a conflict of interest because it is the government which made him the member of this committee. So if he holds this committee membership, he can be disqualified, right? Concept clear? Now, what our parliament has done regarding the parliamentary insta MPs, that's why I wrote MPs in the end of this list. Regarding the MPs, Article 102 contains the disqualifications of members of parliament. And one of them is that if any MP holds any office of profit, then under Article 103, President has the power to disqualify that MP on the advice of Election Commission of India. Advice is of EZI, but the power is of President of India. However, Article 102 says that MPs will not be disqualified on holding certain offices of profit if Parliament has made a law declaring that if an MP holds these offices, the MP will not be disqualified. It means Parliament has been given the power by constitution to make a law. And in that law, what they will do? They will give a list of offices of profit. And what will they write? Parliament write, if any MP holds any of these offices, then that MP will not be disqualified. So Parliament used that power and made a law. What is that law called? Parliament Prevention of Disqualification Act 1959. Now this act contains a list of offices, which are all technically offices of profit. But then the law says what act says what? That any MP holding these offices will not be disqualified. For example, if any MP is appointed, let us say member or chairman of, let us say NHRC, or let us say National Commission for Scheduled Caste, or National Commission for Scheduled Tribe, or if any MP is appointed, let us say, for example, Deputy Chairman, Deputy Chairman of Planning Commission, which has now become what? Niti Ayuk. Then that MP will not be disqualified. So that list of offices we have in which law? In this law called Parliament Prevention, as the name itself tells you, Prevention of Disqualification. So this law aims to prevent disqualification of some MPs on the ground of holding these offices, which are offices of profit. So the President of India cannot hold any office of profit. So remember this exception is only for the MPs, not for the President. So President, Vice President, they cannot hold any office of profit, right? Okay. So now we come to the main topic for today, that is the election of Indian President. So as I was saying that every year, every five years when we have uh, elections of president, there is definitely one question in exam from his election process. So let me show you one question. Yeah, look at this question. Okay, so we will come back to this question once we have done the entire uh, topic. Okay, first of all, the election of Indian president is not direct. It means the general population, we people do not vote for the election of president of India. So the election is indirect, right? Now, why did our Samvidhan Sabha, Constituent Assembly, choose a system of indirect election of the president? Why not? a directly elected president. So there are some reasons. So the first question which arises is why indirect, why indirect elections? Okay, first reason, right? You all know that the president of India is only going to be a nominal head of state, right? He doesn't have any real powers. Whatever powers he has on paper, he has to exercise them on the aid and advice of PM and the Council of Ministers. So now tell me, does it really make sense? Is it wise 
that we conduct direct elections in a country of India's size to choose someone who is only going to be a ceremonial head of the country? No. So first of all, it does not make any sense that in parliamentary system, you are choosing the head of state with so much of expenditure, so much of administrative you know, involvement of the country, right? Okay, second reason. Second reason is that the offices of president and governors of states, they are expected to be completely non-political offices. We do not want any political bias in the behavior, in the actions of president, as well as all the governors of states. So now tell me, if we have direct elections of the president, that means political parties will get involved. Politics will take place. So if a president of India is getting elected by involvement of all the political parties in all the politics, after getting elected, can we expect from him that he will remain politically neutral? No. So a directly elected president will not be politically neutral. But what do we want? We want him to be politically neutral, right? Third point. Tell me, what if the president of India, if directly elected, let us say, is from X political party? And what if in the lower house, Lok Sabha, Y party comes to power majority? So the prime minister will be from which party? Y party. So president from X party, PM from Y party, this will lead to conflict between president and the prime minister, crisis of governance, crisis of policy making, crisis of policy implementation, right? Fourth point. Fourth point is that if president of India is chosen directly, that means he will of course start the election campaign like American president, he will start making some promises to people of India, Ki bhai, please vote for me, people of India. If I become the president, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. Now, whatever promises he is making, does he really have the powers to fulfill the promises? Because who has the powers of governance also making? The PM and COM. So the question is, if he is directly elected, on what grounds will he fight the elections? What promises will he make to the people? And even if he makes promises, what power he has to fulfill those promises, right? So therefore, for these reasons, we simply wanted the president of India to be indirectly elected where people will not participate. Now, if people are not participating, if people are not the electors in this election, then who are the electors? Who elects the president of India? So the people who elect president of India together are called as electoral college. So electoral college refers to a special group of people, a special group of electors who elect president of India. And this is not common people. This is not the ordinary people of India. In case of American uh, president's elections, this electoral college is specially constituted. And after these electors vote for the president, this college is dissolved. But in case of India, we have a slightly different uh, college. So who are the members in this college? First is the elected members of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Now the word here elected is very important. What does it tell us? That the MPs of parliament who are MPs by nomination, do they participate in the elections? Answer is no. So you all know that until 2020, the president of India could nominate two Anglo-Indians to Lok Sabha. And even today, we have a provision that president can nominate 12 members from fields of literature, arts, science, and social service. So those two Anglo-Indians who used to be there until recently, and even today, these 12 guys, they are not part of the electoral college. So they will not vote in the elections of the president. Okay. And second is the elected members of all the legislative assemblies. So elected MLAs of 28 states of India. Now this electoral college, this definition, what we are discussing is given in article 54 of the Indian constitution. This article tells 
that who are the electors in the election of president of india now i hope you all understand this that in our original constitution states of india were organized or india was organized into four parts of states part a states part b states part c states and part d states before independence our leaders wanted to reorganize india on basis of language but the circumstances which prevailed during independence and after independence it was agreed that the time is not right to divide indian states on basis of language because we already had a lot of divisions in society on grounds of religion communal divisions we did not want to divide people and states and society on one more ground so we deferred that reorganization we delayed that matter finally 1956 on recommendation of states reorganization commission headed by fazl ali parliament will finally reorganize india mainly on grounds of language but i hope you remember language was not the only ground only one of the main grounds so when we will do this we will reorganize india into 14 states and for the first time union territories now union territories are directly administered by the president of india which means central government so uts are not a part of india's federal system so when i say india is a federation that means union and the states of india and not the uts so uts are not considered part of federation they are directly administered by the president of india so now there was a demand that all right there are certain uts in india but then these uts are big enough that their people also should have a second level of government that means they should have their own chief minister their own council of ministers their own vidhan sabha they should have power to make laws now uts could not have vidhan sabhas only who could have states could have so then what the parliament will do it will amend the constitution and add a special article article 239a in constitution which says that the parliament by law may provide legislatures even for union territories and that is how many uts got their vidhan sabhas and one by one these uts were upgraded to states like goa like himachal like tripura arunachal so all these were uts with vidhan sabhas but now they have all become what they have all become states but pondicherry since then is still a ut so pondicherry is a ut with its own vidhan sabha that's one exception and second it will come in context of delhi so by 69th amendment delhi will be given a special article in constitution article 239 aa so only for delhi we have a separate article in constitution to so delhi ka apna alag hi swag chal raha hai samvidhan mein and this article will designate delhi as national capital territory of delhi with its own legislative assembly and that parliament will give it by law so you all know delhi has a vidhan sabha of 70 mlas so when the 69th amendment was passed some mps demanded ki bhai if you are giving delhi its own vidhan sabha why not allow the mlas of delhi also and pondicherry also to participate in the election of the president so this 69th amendment was done and just after this by 70th amendment 70th caa what we will do parliament will amend article 54 this contains a definition of what electoral college and parliament will write a line simply after this what line that the word state in this article includes the ut of delhi and jammu and kashmir so in second point when we say elected mlas of 28 states so what is now the explanation that the word state includes ut of delhi and pondicherry it means even their mlas will vote in the election of the president of india now the question arises that recently this erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir has been converted into two uts out of which not ladakh but jnk is going to have what its own legislative assembly so then will the mlas of jnk also participate in the elections that question arises interesting incident on this so there was someone i think he was a law student uh, of some university and he filed an rti to election commission of india eci kci please uh, tell me give me the information that is jammu and kashmir also a part of 
electoral college of the president of india now i explain to you that after delhi was given a special status then by 70th amendment we made that change ki the word state includes pondicherry and delhi but did we add jnk in that explanation no so maybe election commission of india was not clear about the answer so what was the answer given to the applicant rt applicant ki for the information which you are asking for the answer of this question please refer to article 54 of the indian constitution article 54 padh lo wahan se mil jayega jawab right that means maybe even eci was not very clear ki is jnk going to be a part of electoral college but now this confusion makes no sense because anyways elections have been announced of president of india and jnk assembly elections have still not been conducted so anyways the question makes now no sense but ha it is not only eight states plus the mlas of delhi and pondicherry so jnk is not going to participate in the 2022 presidential election right so it is going to be our which election 16th election 16th presidential election but the president who will be elected he will be 15th president what does it mean ha huh? what is abdul kalam has to do with this nothing yes it is because dr rajendra prasad was president for two terms na so we have one less president so 15th president but elections are 16th right okay now now see in the election of uh, president na there are two things that we have to understand first is the voting we have to understand and second we have to understand the counting two separate things now you would wonder what is the big deal after voting is in counting is simple you count the votes no that's where the tricky part comes counting is slightly uh, different from other elections before we come to that uh, the question is uh, why are we holding elections right now in 2022 now the constitution says that the term of the president article 56 it says that the term of the president is 5 years right now article 62 talks about the timing of election of the president timing of election of president by timing we mean when are these elections due to be conducted so article 62 says in case of normal times normal time means when the president is going to complete his 5 years term so the process of election should be completed before the incumbent what's incumbent incumbent means the current holder of any office is called as incumbent so right now president ramnath kovind is the incumbent in the office of president so in normal times before the president completes his 5 years we should have completed the election of our next president that is this year normal year but sometimes we may have some abnormal years that means in case of sudden vacancy so how can we have sudden vacancy in the office death impeachment resignation or otherwise for example what if his election is declared as invalid by supreme court so in case of sudden vacancy then the constitution says election is to be held within Six months. That is why currently uh, we are in a normal year, so we are supposed to uh, elect our next president before the term of current president, the incumbent. Com it's over then, gets completed. Okay. Now coming to the election process as such. Now, what is the system of election that we have adopted for the election of president? Now that system in constitution is called proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. Now both these concepts we will discuss separately and in detail. Now please note that proportional representation 
is different from the system that we use for Lok Sabha election, Vidhan Sabha election, local bodies elections, and that is first past the post, FPTP. In FPTP, who wins the election? Let us say in a particular constituency, in a particular geographical constituency, let us say if 10 candidates from different parties are fighting the election. So out of 10 candidates, who wins the election? The one who gets plurality of the votes. Now plurality of votes is different from majority of votes. Majority of votes means more than half, more than half. So whatever is total votes, half, more than half, right? That means the next higher number of half, whereas plurality of votes means it means more than all my rivals, more than all my rivals, right? Let's take an example. Let's say this is a Lok Sabha constituency, right? Now in India, on an average, now, Lok Sabha constituencies have 24, 25 lakh people, right? So let's say this constituency has 20 lakh population, right? Now, out of all the eligible voters, a lot of voters do not cast vote, right? Because of many reasons. Either they are not in the constituency during voting. Let's say they can be students. They can be working people. They can be tourists. They are touring somewhere. Ghumna firna kar rahe wo. So, jis din voting thi, us din wo apni constituency mein thi nahi. So, they can't vote. So, whatever are total number of voters, the remaining voters who actually vote, the votes will get divided amongst all the candidates. Now, imagine in this constituency, there are three popular parties and they have a close fight. Let's say, let's say, let's say, if it's case of Delhi, we can say BJP and let's say Amadni party and let's say Congress, they have a very close fight in this constituency. And then we have other parties also. Now, if there is a close fight amongst three parties, what will happen that the votes will get almost equally. Like close fight se kya hota hai? Nasdi kya hai Bahut close fight. Hai. Iska matlab, the votes will get almost equally divided into these three parties and even other parties. So what may happen that out of these candidates, let us say if Ahmadni party is winning this seat, maybe the guy who has won the elections, maybe he has got, let us say, only 5 lakh votes. Maybe only 4 lakh votes, maybe even less. So it does not matter that he must get majority of the votes. He must get only what votes? Plurality of votes. So the biggest disadvantage of this system is that the person who wins the election can be someone who has less people voting for him than the people who have not voted for him. Or the point? Well, let us say out of 20 lakh people, if he got 4 lakh votes, it means 4 lakh people have voted for him, but 16 lakh people have not voted for him. Yet he becomes the representative MP of the entire population. Now we do not want this to happen in case of president's election because president is the head of state. So this should not happen that someone has been, someone has been chosen the president just because we have a number of candidates, the votes got divided. So the guy who got highest votes has become the president of India. No, we want the president to be a representative of the entire country. So for that, he must be someone who has got majority of the votes and not just plural votes. Choose Kia, that's why he is going to become president of India. That's why we have chosen this system proportional representation. Now, this proportional representation system now has two types. Two types. First is what we call in India, we have single transferable vote system. The second is what they follow in France. It is called holding off run off election. So, president of France, Indian president is chosen by single transferable vote. A French president is chosen by runoff elections. What does it mean? Let us in case of French president's elections, we have, let us say, five candidates. One, two, three, four, five. Now, as per proportional representation to win the election, out of these five, whoever wants to win the election must get how many votes? Majority of the votes. Right? The chances are, if you want majority of the votes, the votes may get so divided that no one has got majority of the votes. 
So let's say out of 100% of the votes, let us say candidate A, he gets, let us say, 20% of the votes. This gets 25% of the votes. He gets 15% of the votes, likewise. Right? So out of five candidates, nobody has got 50%. So now what we will do or what they do is they hold a second round of voting. It means the French people will vote for a second time. And in second time, only who will contest? All five of them. No, then only the top two candidates. And only when two candidates contest, one of them will get what? More than half of the votes. This second round of voting, when the all, all the electors vote for second time, this type of election is called as runoff election. Now, this does not make sense in India. Right. So because the system not only becomes very uh, tedious, it's also very expensive also. So in India, we have adopted what? Single transferable vote. So the electors, MPs and MLAs, they cast vote only once, no second voting. So remember in the elections of Indian president, voting happens only once. Counting may take place more than once. Voting once, counting may happen. It may not happen. It may happen more than once, one time counting, two time counting or three times counting may happen, right? Let us see. What is that system? Acha, the, uh, in what I have mentioned, the voting is by a secret ballot. That means the MPs and MLAs are free to cast vote as per their conscience. The political party directions are not binding on them because nobody knows that who has given vote to whom. So the voting is by a secret ballot. Now in this concept, let us understand both the phrases. First, proportional representation, and second is single transferable vote. By the way, the same system we use for the election of Raj Sabha MPs, the same system we use also for the vice president, and same for the members of state legislative councils. So six states in India at present have upper houses, na, SLCs. Okay. Now this proportional representation, this method is given in article 55 of our constitution. Now, what does it say? Now, who are the electors in constitution in the election of president? Uh, electors are the MPs, elected MPs and the elected MLAs. Now the MPs represent the union, MPs represent the union, while MLAs represent the states of India. So president of India should be so elected that we uphold the federal principle of our constitution. Federation means we are center and states, both should have role in the election of the president. First, let us focus on states, states. Now constitution makers wanted the states of India to play a role in the election of president of India, not equally, not equally, but in proportion to the population of the states. That's why the name proportional representation. That means the bigger is the population, the higher is the population of a state, the bigger will be its role in the election of the president. That is why out of all the states of India, which state will play the biggest role UP. We will see how. So we want to make sure that the states are represented in the electoral college or they play a role. Their importance is dependent on the population of the states. So the bigger a state is, the people of that state should have bigger voice in the election of the president of India. Now for this purpose, what we do is that all these MLAs, na, all these MLAs, when they will cast vote in the election, their vote will have a certain value attached to it, a certain value. So, or you can call it this way that the MLAs of states, now they have different number of votes. For example, if I'm an MLA of Uttar Pradesh and let's say you are an MLA of, let us say Sikkim. So both of us, you can say it two way. Either you can say that both of us, our votes will not have same value. Whose vote will have greater value? My vote. Or Alternatively, you can say that I have more votes. Even if our vote has equal value, I have more votes. So ultimately, who has more role? I have more role. 
So for that, what we do is we decide that what is the value of vote of every MLA. And for that, there is a formula given in our constitution. And this formula UPSC can ask in prelims exam or the main exam. What is the formula? The formula is, let me write here, value of vote of an MLA is equal to total population of the state divided by number of elected MLAs in that state, in that state. Simple. So let us say you want to calculate the value of vote of an MLA of UP. So what will you do? You will put here population of UP and you will divide it by total number of elected MLAs in UP. How many? How many MLAs in UP? 400. That is in Lok Sabha, Vidhan Sabha MLAs, MLAs is 403. So population of UP divided by 403. Now tell me something. Numerator has what? Population. Dometer is what? Only 403. It means this answer will be what? Very big. That means the value of vote of an MLA will be what? In lakhs and crores. So adding that value and doing all the calculation will become very cumbersome. So what we can do is simplify our life. So what we can do is we can divide this value further by 1000. This is the formula given in constitution. So I hope you understand what is the significance of 1000. We just want to simplify the numbers. That's where we are trying to reduce this lakhs and crores into hundreds, right? Okay. Now by using this formula, I can find out the vote of all the MLAs of India. Let me show you some examples, right? Let us take first example of a very small state of India, right? Sikkim. So Sikkim's population as per 71 census was this. So this upon Sikkim is how many MLAs? 32 into 1,000, right? The answer will be Sikkim's vote value is 7. So when one MLA of Sikkim casts vote, what is the value of that vote? 7. Or you can say if the value is 1, every MLA has how many votes? 7 votes. Whatever way you want to say, that is the... Achha, 7 is 1 MLA. Total how many MLAs? 32 is equal to 7 to the 14, 224. So 224 is now what? The total role, the total value of all MLAs of Sikkim. So Sikkim as a state, Sikkim as a whole has this much value in the election of the Indian president. Let us do the same exercise for UP now, the biggest state. UP's population as per 71 census 50 years ago. Achha, divided by 403 into 1 upon 1000. So the answer will be 208. The value of vote of one MLA of UP is equal to how much? 208. So when one MLA casts vote of UP, his vote is counted as 208, not as one vote. That is why UP plays biggest role. Plus this is one MLA's vote. Total how many MLA's? 403. So this is the importance of UP in the election of the president. What was the role of Sikkim as a whole, entire state? 224. And here only one MLA, how much? 208. It's like whoever is fighting the election of president, if he goes to Sikkim and meets all the MLAs of Sikkim and tries to convince them, please vote for me, vote for me, I'm a good guy. And if all of them vote for him, then he gets how much? 224. And even if he goes to UP and one MLA votes for him, he has got almost same value of votes, right? Okay. Now this exercise I can do for all the states of India. What exercise? Simple. Set value of vote. Value of vote of one MLA into total MLAs. Total number of elected MLAs. Remember that word, right? Even if I don't speak or write, that is understood. Elected MLAs. MLAs is equal to what comes 
the value of the entire state right value of votes of state so let's say sikkim we have said one mla's vote is how much value seven total how many mla's 32 is equal to 224 up value vote of one mla is equal to 208 into how many mla's 403 is equal to whatever number comes so this exercise i can do for all the states of india and in the end what i will do in the end i will total all these values so what will this number come this number will be the total value of all votes of all mlas of india but this is what value roll of sikkim Rule of UP, rule of Assam, Nagaland, Mizoram, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Gujarat, Maharashtra. So once I add all these, it means total uh, total value of votes of all MLAs of all states of India, including Delhi and Pondicherry, right? And that value in this year's election is going to be. Let me write where. Let me write here. Let me change the color of the pen. It is going to be five lakh forty three thousand two thirty one. This is going to be value of votes of all the MLAs this year, 2022. Slightly less because JNK is not participating. So one state or one UT has now less. So we have slightly less, right? Okay. Let me show you the table. Look at this table. I hope you can read this from back. <clears throat> so election 2022. so names of states names of states number of assembly seats elected so which vidhan sabha has how many mlas for example we have taken two examples sikkim 32 we have taken and up we have taken 403 and remaining you all know right <coughs> then population as per 71 census yeah one thing i forgot to mention in that formula when we calculate the value of vote of the mlas in numerator the population that we have is not the current population that population is as per 1971 census i forgot to mention and you guys also did not ask me so this population is not the current population this is as per 1971 census why i think you all remember the reason why why do did we freeze this population control correct so by 42nd amendment we not only froze the delimitation exercise but also the value of vote of mlas in the election of the president for how many years 1976 for 25 years till 2001 and in this even vajpayee ji will be the prime minister he will bring 84th amendment 2001 and he will further freeze it till 2026 because if you do not freeze this value then if i am the chief minister of a state what will i think ki oh my mlas when they will participate in the election of president then they will have importance according to the population of my state so why would i take sincere steps to control the population i would not right okay so this population is 1971 that's why in that table now it's 1971 okay so population 71 census then this is the value of vote of each mla you can see up is 208 sikkim is 7 and this is i hope you can see total value is 5 43000 231 right now if you observe these are the independent values of states and you will see that there is a proportion with their population so bigger is the population bigger is this value so up has how much value up has this much value 83824 out of 543000 up has how much weightage 83000 so that's why the name is what proportional representation states have a role or states are represented in proportion to their population right now coming to the second part of the uh, 
this concept not only we want a proportional representation of all the states we also want a parity between union and all the states on other hand so union on one hand it means parliament on one hand and the importance of all the states on the other hand we want a parity between these two so that the president represents as much he represents states he represents the union also so he is a representative of both so we want the importance of union and states to be equal now the importance of states we have already calculated remember this total what was it 5 lakh 5 lakh 43231 this is the value of votes of all the mlas we want this to be equal to whose value of votes value of votes of mps value of votes of all mps isn't it so if this is done then i can say ki mps on one hand and all the states on the other hand both play equal role in the election of the president right now i want to derive the formula to find out value of vote of one mp right we have already seen formula which formula one mla value i want to now derive the value of vote of one mp so very simple it's not a it's not as if it's a big derivation simple logic i will break this phrase i will break this phrase into two parts i will bifurcate it so i will write here what i want to find out i want to find out value of vote of one mp in two so what should i write here by this is the value of votes of all mps i am bifurcating it into two parts value of vote of one mp into what total mps number of mps total number of elected mps is equal to what same thing simple this much maths to you all know childhood remember memories so now i want to find this formula so what should i do take this where in the denominator so this goes to denominator so what the formula becomes value of vote of one mp is equal to value of votes of all mlas divided by number of elected mps and this is given in the constitution simple formula derivation even if you forget in the exam if you remember the logic you can still derive it yourself just remember we have to equate lhs with rhs and we called school days in mathematics these questions used to be the most interesting no because the answer is in front of you examiner is just asking you what he by prove prove that left hand side is equal to right hand side so you have to just do something something with these steps in the end right what hence yeah hence lhs is equal to rhs hence proved itna hi kafi nahi hai do line bhi khichunga end mein a sense of you know accomplishment yes lo jao kar diya proof tumne proof karne ke liye kaha tha maine kar diya proof acha aise questions mein na i remember i am sure this have would have happened with you guys also ki such questions tha if you don't know them you would not like to leave them aapko pata hai ki yahi to proof karna hai aana to yahi chahiye so you will try to do something with these steps mess with these steps and in the end you will try to reach the same thing so one thing you know one day i remember this incident in my school so this question came in my test i did not know the proper derivation so in the end i did something wrong with steps and i wrote like this only hence rhs hence rhs proved so now you can't mess with your math teacher he knows his stuff so when, when my copy came back after evaluation what he did is he cut both my hences <laughs> he wrote his two new hences he wrote here hence zero <laughs> hence zero and hence call your parents <laughs> <laughs> so after that day i never you know took panga with my maths teacher if you do not know no question leave it so just remember lhs is equal to rhs so if i do this exercise then simple exercise na let's do it we just have to find out this we already know 
so 543231 and how many are the elected mps 543 plus rajasabha elected mps 245 minus 12 245 are total mps minus 12 how much 233 so i will write here 233 this is equal to is equal to 700 and we have to round off the numbers right so we round off if the fraction after division is more than half we round it off to a higher number and if the remaining fraction is less than half we just we wave it off we just remove it so 700 so value of vote of one mp is equal to how much 700 so if i am an mp when i cast a vote to say it's one vote but it has 700 value obviously by out of mlas are how many participating this year total mlas here participating this year are 4809 and mlas mps are how many mps are only 6 7 7 776 so on one hand the value of votes of the mla is so many mla is you want to bring equal to value of votes of the mps so obviously you have to give a higher value much higher value to the votes of the mps then only it can be equal to these many mla's votes right 700 now so this we already know we have done this exercise okay now we come to uh, the second part of the election process that is single transferable vote so far what have we done so far we have just found out we have just calculated that what is the value of vote of all the mlas and mps now it's time for voting now the voting is done by mlas in respective vidhan sabha so let's say if i am assam mla i will vote in assam vidhan sabha kerala mla i will vote in kerala vidhan sabha and mps vote in here in parliament now the voting takes place not on machines like lok sabha elections of vidhan sabha but on traditional ballot papers and these ballot papers have only two columns first column will have the names of candidates and no political parties names of the candidates right so let's say we have four candidates fighting the election so a b c and like this you will have all the ballot papers right okay so now in case of lok sabha elections and vidhan sabha elections when we people vote we do not have the choice the option of giving our preferences isn't it we only give our one and only preference we press a button voting is blocked done but here the electors the mps and mlas do not give only one choice they actually give an order of choice that means who is their first preference what is second preference what is third what is fourth it same as let us say you guys giving a preference to your services what is your first choice so let's say ias is your first choice ips is your second choice and whatever so if i do not get ias then this is my second choice if this is also i am not getting then this is my third choice or this is my fourth choice right same way here the electors give choices let us say this ballot paper acha the pen is to, which is to be used to voting is also election commission provides so you will not use use your own pen and you have to simply write numbers you don't have to write them in words and you have to put the numbers very clearly if there is any confusion your vote will be cancelled for example if i give a vote let's say i am an mla or mp and i give vote and let's say i write one in front of a one in front of c two and three then chuki mujhe a aur c dono hi pasand hai it's like asking me my favorite actress so i can't pick one by i have many favorite actresses 
I have when I pick one. So is this vote valid? It becomes invalid. Or let us say, I don't know whom I want to become the president. I don't know who is my first choice, but I definitely know that D is not going to be there. So what I can do? I can write four in front of D. कि ये तो मेरी लास्ट पक्का है फर्स्ट कौन है आई कांट डिसाइड सो देन व्हाट विल हैपन टू माय वोट माय वोट वुड बी कैंसिल्ड सो ऑल सच वोटिंग्स व्हिच आर नॉट क्लियर वेयर अ कैंडिडेट इलेक्टर हैज गिवन टू फर्स्ट चॉइसेस और टू सेकंड चॉइसेस और एनी सच वोट्स दे आर ऑल कैंसिल्ड बाय द इलेक्शन कमीशन लेट मी ओके okay let us say this ballot paper now goes in the hands of let us say sikkim mla because we already know his votes value so this is sikkim mla's ballot paper this is also sikkim mla's ballot paper this is let us say up's mla ballot paper this is up's mla let's say this is tamil nadu's mla this is this is member of parliament thick now the this mla will open the paper he will take a pen given to him and he will what write his choice let's say he and his party and i told you already ki parties directions are not binding on the electors they can vote as per their conscience so even if my party has proposed the name of a if i don't like a i can go against my party right and the anti defection law is not applicable right so let's say i want a to be the president so i write one in front of a let's say d is my second choice so if not a then d should be the president if not d then b and then let us say c let's say this mla gives c his first choice a second choice d third and fourth this mla let us say gives b his first choice 2 3 4 let's say he gives d first choice 2 3 4 let's say this the mla do mla he gives let's say a first choice 2 3 4 let's say this member of parliament mp let's say he gives d first choice let's say 1 2 3 4 now after mp's mlas have done the voting their job is over so tata good bye they go back to home now starts the job of election commission which will start the counting of the votes voting is done so i told you in this system uh, stv single transferable vote the voting happens once counting may if required may be done twice or thrice ha but once counting will be done so now the vote counting starts now the first round of counting what eci will do election commission of india it will just see that in every ballot paper who has been given the first choice we will see only first choice we do not care about 2 3 4 in the first round so round number 1 Round one of counting, so A, B, C, and D is equal to is equal to is equal to is equal to. So I open this first ballot paper. I see who has got the first choice A. So first vote goes to A. And should I write here one? No. How much? Seven is the value. So I will write here seven. Second, whose vote Sikkim again? And who has got this vote C? So C also gets seven. next up b has got and up is mla you know how much is the value 208 so b ka khata khul gaya account is now opened with 208 votes again up who has got first choice d now d is account is open now 208 next tamil nadu mla a 176 so plus so tamil nadu's mlas have how much value 176 So I write right here one seven six. So one seven six plus. Okay, last ballot paper. MP D. How much is the value? Seven hundred. So I add here D seven hundred. Now this I will do for all the votes of MLAs and MP. This exercise. So I will keep doing plus 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 like this. so in the end i will get total votes of a total votes of b total votes of c total votes of d 
ABCD. Four are the candidates. Now comes the question that to be declared elected, how many votes these guys want? So how many votes A should get or B should get or C should get? Then we can declare either of these as president of India. What is that quota of votes? Here the word quota does not mean reservation. Quota means number. What is the required number? So if I am contesting the election of president, how many MPs and MLAs should vote for me? And what should be my total of value of votes so that I can be declared as elected president of India. Now that quota is determined by a formula. And that formula, let me write here small quota of votes. Quota of votes required is equal to total value of valid votes. Because I told you that some ballot papers may be declared as invalid, right? Total value valid votes upon one plus vacancies. I hope you remember we discussed this formula in the election of Ras Sabha also in our first or second class, maybe, right? Plus one. Now, in case of President of India, how many are the vacancies? One, only one post, no? one guy, only one vacancy. So I will put here what? one so this becomes how much total value of vote upon two plus one that means one more than half this is what two the total votes ka half ho gaya na? half of our total votes plus one means more than half of the votes it means to be declared elected a person would need a candidate would need more than half of the total votes and what is total votes i give you number also let me write again here five lakh forty three thousand 231 is the value of votes of MLAs, 5,43,200 is value of votes of MPs. Slight difference because of rounding off, right? Total is how much? 10,86,431. These numbers are not important for exam. Don't worry. Just the process is important, not the numbers. No, so don't worry about the numbers. So how much is the total votes? 10,86,431. Let us say all these electors, now MLA, MPs, MLAs cast vote. No, no one is absent and nobody's vote is cancelled. Everybody's vote is valid. In that case, what is the half? 5 lakh 43,000, something, something. So more than half. That is what anybody needs to be declared as elected. Let us say out of these four guys, if there is a close fight amongst three guys, so what will happen? The votes will get almost equally split and if the votes are almost equally split 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent that means nobody has got 50 percent or more of votes it means in first round of counting nobody could get this quota if nobody has got this quota now we go to second round of counting right we go to second round round number two round number two now, before we enter round two, we will see that out of these four guys, who has got the least number of votes in the first round. That means that guy has been given first choice by least number of MPs and MLAs. Maybe he is the least popular guy. So now we will ask him to lead the race. Okay, sorry, sir. Try next time. Better luck next time. This time you are out of the race. So who, let us say, assume least. No, no, not in this. This is just an example. Nah? So let us assume that D has got least choice. Let's assume, assume. So let's say this total of D is the least. Let us say is the least. It means D has been given first choice by least number of candidates. So now what we do, we look at the ballot papers where D was given the first choice. So where is D the first choice? Here. Here D is first choice and here. Now, in this ballot paper, now we will see at the second choice. So, who is second choice? B. Now, this vote now goes to whom? B. Now, I will add here how much? Whose vote? UPMLA 208. So, what have we done? The first preference votes, vote of D has been transferred to the second preference vote of the same elector of the same MP or MLA. Because 
भाई लेट से आई वॉज दिस एम एल ए यूपी आई वॉन्टेड डी टू बी दी प्रेसिडेंट बट देन ही हेज गॉट लीज नंबर ऑफ वोट सो ही इज नाउ आउट ऑफ दी रेस सो इफ नॉट दी हु इज माई सेकेंड चॉइस B. So now my vote to goes to B. My vote goes to B. Same with this MP wanted D to be the president of India, but after first round D got the first uh, D got the least number of votes, so he's out of the race. So then his MP wanted whom to be the second choice? Oh, by chance B. So again his vote goes to whom? Goes to B. That means again how much? Seven hundred. Like this we will transfer all the first preference votes of D to the. respective a b and c so let's say some votes a will also get some votes c will also get so we will have now three new totals we will have total of a a new total total of b total of c and if any of these totals is more than this quota that means more than half we will declare him as elected what if still nobody has got 50% of the votes then now we will see that out of a b and c who has got the least choice now we will repeat the same exercise transfer of the votes this is called as single transferable vote system now this exercise we required transfer of votes interestingly uh in which year so what happened dr zakir husain was president of india from 1967 uh, to 1969 and he died suddenly in office and what would we say article 62 says what in case of death resignation or impeachment elections to be held within 6 months <clears throat> so when he died it means election commission of india will start preparing for the elections now in 1969 now uh, what was happening that uh, within congress party Indira Gandhi was facing some resistance from senior leaders of Congress party say Murari Desai and other senior leaders they were called as syndicate so internally Indira Gandhi because she was relatively young she was relatively less experienced she was facing a crisis of leadership within the Congress party so Congress party internally was kind of divided now these senior leaders of Congress party other than Indira Gandhi they wanted Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy to become the president of india <clears throat> because nilam sanjeev reddy was considered a kind of rival of indira gandhi so that he could control indira gandhi indira gandhi did not want him to become president so now what will happen interestingly now these congress party leaders senior leaders without the consensus of indira gandhi they will declare that congress party is going to support which candidate sanjeev reddy now what indira gandhi will do now when zakir hussain died the vice president of india at that time was bb giri varagiri venkat giri so you all know that if president is not able to discharge his duties for whatever reason or in case of death impeachment resignation vp will act as president so vv giri at that time was acting as president of india so indira gandhi will now want him to become full time president so she will advise him that sir you do one thing in fact at that time we had one more confusion ki when the vice president in death of case of president when he acts as president does he become acting president or does he become president yeah so to to not have any confusion she advised him sir you do one thing you resign and you contest election as an independent candidate congress party is supporting whom sanjeev reddy but you fight independent of me and i will support you and within congress party my mps and mlas who are with me they will support you so you fight the elections independently so what he will do now he will resign now according to constitution president can submit his resignation to vice president and vice president if he wants to resign he will submit his resignation to whom to the president now president of india died vp vv giri acting as president and he wants to resign to so who is resigning and to whom he is resigning kaun kar raha hai resign acting president resign kar raha hai ya vp resign kar raha hai aur kar raha hai to phir vp kisko kar raha hai because he is what acting as president so by remember in bureaucracy or in such 
constitution offices we have a feature called as impersonality so it's not the person who is holding the office it is the office which matters so now he will resign as what as vice president and he will address his resignation to whom to the president subject resignation as vp sir with due respect with all due respect i humbly want to say that from this date onward wef i resign as the vice president your sincerely vv giri i'm just giving you sample resignation <laughs> right sample it's not that we he actually resigned so he resigns to the president now he doesn't care who is the president if he himself is the acting president he doesn't care but he has resigned as a vp now he resigned as vp president already died it means no president and no vice president so for the first time our then cgi justice hidayatullah had to act as the president of india okay so when vivigri will resign he will become an independent candidate he will become an independent candidate so he was congress party's candidate he was independent candidate and then the opposition parties will propose the name of cd deshmukh cd deshmukh so now this will become a three corner contest ye triangle ban jayega is a love triangle hota hai na teen ho jata hai aise teen ho gaye to ab jab teen ho gaye aur teeno popular leaders ek tarah se hain to votes kya ho jayenge divide so in this election year 1969 we will have to use the transfer of the votes right and the second interesting event which will happen will be in 1977 when neelam sanjeeva reddy will contest the election and he will be declared unopposed why because in 1977 if i remember correctly uh, maybe if i remember correctly around 13 candidates or 14 candidates something they filed their nomination papers to fight the election when you file your nomination papers eci will scrutinize them to make sure that you are eligible and you are qualified so you have qualifications and you should not have any of the disqualifications so election commission of india scrutinizes nomination papers to make sure you are eligible so in that scrutiny all except one candidate sanjeev reddy was found to be eligible so all of the other candidates their nomination papers were rejected so he was the only guy in the election अपुन जी सब कुछ है सो नो नीड ऑफ काउंटिंग नो नीड ऑफ वोटिंग नो नीड ऑफ नथिंग सो ही वॉज इलेक्टेड अन अपोज एंड दिस इज दी इंसिडेंट इन आवर हिस्ट्री वेन दी प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया वॉज इलेक्टेड अन अपोज राइट ओके नाउ वॉट इफ देर आर अच्छा वन कपल ऑफ यू मोर थिंग्स बिफोर आई फॉर गेट टू फाइट द इलेक्शन ऑफ प्रेजिडेंट यू मस्ट गेट योर नेम proposed by 50 people so you need 50 proposers and another 50 people who are different from these 50 they will second your name matlab they will support your name it's like first 50 people proposing your name other 50 saying ki ha ha theek aadmi hai chalo lada usko chunav lada and now who are these guys common people no these are members of the electoral college it means 50 mps or 50 mlas why did we do this by the way article 71 of the constitution na it empowers the parliament to make rules regarding election of the president so we have a law made by parliament called presidential and vice presidential election act 1952 now there have been some people in our country who have this fond they are they are fond of contesting elections in 1967 presidential elections and when dr zakir hussain became president 17 candidates had fought the election 17 candidates and guess what out of 17 candidates nine candidates nine candidates got zero votes it means not even a single mp not even a single mla voted for them right acha 
अगले जब इलेक्शन होगा 1969 में 1969 में 15 कैंडिडेट्स विल फाइट द इलेक्शन एंड दिस टाइम एट कैंडिडेट्स विल नॉट गेट इवन अ सिंगल वोट इट मींस सम इनसिंसियर पीपल भाई अपने आप में गर्व की बात है ना मैं चुनाव लड़ा हूं किसका भारत के राष्ट्रपति का तो भाई वॉट पार्लियामेंट विल डू पार्लियामेंट विल अमेंड दिस लॉ एंड ब्रिंग अ कंडीशन की टू फाइट इलेक्शन योर नेम मस्ट बी एटलीस्ट सपोर्टेड बाय टेन प्रपोजर्स एंड टेन सेकेंडर्स सो इनिशियली वी हैड टेन टेन बट इवन आफ्टर दैट पीपल विल नॉट लोग बाज नहीं आते हरकतों से तो देन पार्लियामेंट विल इंक्रीज द नंबर टू हाउ मच एट प्रेजेंट फिफ्टी एंड फिफ्टी बिकॉज सी आउट ऑफ ऑल दी एम एल एज एंड एम पीज इफ इवन हंड्रेड एम पीज एम एल एज आर नॉट सपोर्टिंग यू then how do you expect to win the election so this make sure that the insincere people they do not disturb the election process we should maintain the dignity the decorum of the election of president of india it should not become like panchayat election sab lad rahe hain nagar nigam chunav sab that should not happen right okay <coughs> acha regarding disputes where can you challenge election disputes only in supreme court so election dispute petition has to be filed in supreme court within 30 days within 30 days of result and who can challenge can me and you challenge we common people can we challenge no who can challenge either a candidate either a candidate or at least 20 electors at least 20 electors that means at least 20 mps or mlas can go to court challenging the result of the president of india right okay acha tell me something what if his result is declared invalid and the supreme court orders for revoting or recounting so before his result is declared as invalid in his name certain actions may have been performed right so will those actions will also become invalid no actions remain valid right okay now let us solve that question which we saw earlier so value of vote of each mla varies from state to state correct and value of vote of mps of lok sabha is more than the value vote of mps of rajya sabha no all have same value that is 700 so this is so answer is a one only so now i am sure that you can solve any question in prelims exam or main exam if asked from the election process of president right okay <clears throat> 